The Cape Verde Islands in the Atlantic off the African coast are shifting to renewable energy. In the capital Praia, solar-powered streetlights are a sign that the times are changing. This field of solar panels is another. The government's plan is to produce half of Cape Verde's electricity from renewables by 2020. By reducing imports of expensive diesel fuel, the island's main energy source, Cape Verde will save money and also reduce carbon dioxide emissions by 60,000 tons a year. Two years ago, I would have said the technical evolution we need to address climate change is only happening in the rich countries, plus China and a couple of other emerging countries. But in the past two years, it's got going at a remarkable pace in some developing countries as well. In Colombia, authorities have initiated a pollution-reducing urban transit plan. Transport is responsible for about one-third of the country's CO2 emissions. Now in the capital Bogotá, heavily polluting older buses are being replaced with much cleaner and more efficient new ones. The same approach is being implemented with respect to trucks. Financial incentives are in place to encourage replacing the old ones. What's interesting is that climate policies have been able to mobilize business interests at all levels of the global economy. Increasingly, in many cases, there are financial advantages to taking measures to reduce emissions. In the Philippines, reducing greenhouse gas emissions is a major challenge for rice growers. Rice growing leads to large-scale methane emissions because wet rice paddies are an ideal habitat for methane-producing bacteria. Globally, rice farming causes between 50 and 100 million tons of methane to be released per year. Methane is the second most significant greenhouse gas after carbon dioxide. Researchers have learned that the watering of rice paddies can be reduced in certain periods of the rice growing cycle to deprive the methane-producing bacteria of habitat without harming the rice plants.